Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the clickbaity title, that's not really what I do, but it's pretty true, so I want to fill you guys in after the intro, so let's cue the intro and let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm just going to cut to the chase and fill you guys in what's going on. Uh, I started my business here about uh, 2009 or 2010, somewhere around there. I'd have to look at my business license, but uh, it's been about 10, 11 years. And uh, I'm finally uh, cutting it quits, And but I'm talking about the diesel side of things. Uh, I started cutting edge diesel, or it's like I said, around 2009, 2010. And I've uh, been working on diesels ever since. Uh, in the early days, I started out doing uh, intercooler piping and compound kits and uh, turbo kits. I'll put some pictures here while I'm talking about it. I uh, did a lot of six liter stuff, six liter power stroke stuff, because uh, I, uh, I had a six liter power stroke and uh, wanted to make it faster. So I started making some stuff for it and some people wanted to buy it. And I started making some more for people, more for people. And then uh, I had something going and uh, uh, did a lot of sailing and stuff on the forums. If you remember the automotive forum days way back when, uh, powerstroke.org, uh, powerstroke nation, powerstroke army, that kind of stuff. Made, made a lot of good friends there good times uh, and then I started working on trucks uh, doing a lot of performance work and then it kind of just migrated into uh, uh, just stock replacement stuff just repair work and uh, that's what I've been doing for like the past five six years and uh, kind of burned out on it uh, I've been doing it like I said for uh, 10 11 years and uh, I do it kind of part-time here because I work on the ranch here as well so uh, I'm not doing it full-time at least but that's also hard on my customers because sometimes they need stuff done right away and I'm busy doing other stuff and it kind of wears on a guy, you know, some guys want stuff done. And you have to work weekends, long hours, whenever you can and working, working on the ranch other days. So, uh, kind of got burned out on it. And, uh, these old trucks kind of gain value. These, uh, these Ford trucks, they kind of gain value and, uh, they're worth enough now that a guy can make money on them, buying and selling them, fixing them up and stuff. So that's what I've started doing here. So uh, I've kind of dwindled my diesel diesel work down and down and down. If you've noticed, there's no diesels in the parking lot and there's no diesels taking up room in the shop besides our diesel Mustang there. But uh, I've kind of uh, st stopped taking on new customers and uh, now we're getting to where I just have these things to work on. So that's what I mean when I'm cutting it quits. Uh, I had a lot of good customers over the years and uh, real thankful for that. And I even have a couple that said they're gonna have to sell their trucks if I'm not gonna be able to work on them anymore. But uh, uh, I told them I might be able to sneak it in a little bit if they, if they have a major problem. But uh, for the most part, I've, uh, I've slowed down quite a bit on the diesel stuff and it's been a nice release. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, gonna be hard to uh, that solid stream of income to deal with that, not having that. But uh, I've done pretty good with these trucks so far. And uh, so far, it's been doing good. YouTube hasn't given me anything yet, so uh, I don't have that going for me. But uh, uh, I've sold some trucks, and some YouTube's helped me out that way and getting the trucks sold to you guys. So, so that's great. And I uh, thought I would fill you in with uh, what I'm going to do since I'm not working on diesels most of the time in the shop. I'm working on these things, and that involves you guys. So uh, I thought I would fill you in on just uh, the plans for all these trucks I have and why I've been buying so many and uh, what I'm going to do with them. So, And you guys are probably wondering about my project trucks and where all the projects are, are coming along. And I'm going to fill you in on every project truck and uh, fill you in on all the trucks I've bought so far and all of them that are around the property. So let's go dig into that, guys. Well, hey, guys, I guess we'll start on this 69 F350 since I'm currently working on it. Getting ready to dye a dash pad for it. I did a lot of cleaning on the interior of it. And... Uh, just doing a bunch of cleaning, cleaning up the engine bay on it. Turned out really nice. I'm just gonna go over these trucks real fast. Um, I'm gonna go, I have a uh, episode I'm working on this truck that's gonna go over everything I'm doing to it. So uh, check that out at a later date. It'll probably come out when I get a little more stuff done to it. So I can get a little more uh, content in that video. But this truck, I think I've already got it sold. Uh, did some horse trading with a buddy for another truck, a 97 F350 for a frame for our latest crew cab. Uh, We'll talk on that later when I go over that truck, but I think I already have this one sold. Um, so that's great. I was thinking about a bring a trailer auction for this thing, but uh, uh, already having it sold, uh, kind of. We haven't made a deal yet. Uh, we still might go to auction. I'm not sure yet, but uh, anyway, 
that's uh, that's this truck. It's getting cleaned up. Going to put a flatbed on it. Uh, it'll be awesome when it's done because it's just turning out so nice and clean. Ultimate High Boy here. You kind of know what's everything's caught up on this thing because we just did an episode on it not too long ago. New aluminum heads. I did put uh, put new tires on it. I guess since the last time you saw it, it's got 255, 85, 16 BF good wrenches. I took the 750 16s off because they're just too small. Got these a uh, little bit taller. These are like 33.2 or 33.1. I think it uh, it fits the truck pretty good. Kind of wish I had those when I was in Moab. But uh, they're they're just like they're two inches taller, or three inches taller. They're three. I think they're three closer to three, not quite three, about two point eight or something like that taller. Anyway, I think they fit the truck really good. Trucks running great, and uh, no complaints there. So uh, that's the ultimate high boy. We'll go over here to the trucks over here and fill you in with these. Well, over here, this is kind of our staging lot for trucks I'm not really working on right now. Uh, I have, have a few of them here. Uh, 72 uh, crew cab we just picked up. This one has uh, turned out to be really nice, and uh, I think I'm actually keeping this one. Buying this one to keep. I think I'm going to do a build on it, similar to our Ultimate High Boy, but not as Ultimate. Less Ultimate High Boy or Ultimate High Boy 2.0. Uh, was I really like this truck and it was Wimbledon White. I like Wimbledon White and uh, the interior turned out really nice. And uh, I don't think I'd have to do like a bunch of interior work and a bunch of rust repair on this thing. It needs cab mounts and floors, obviously, but uh, uh, I think you know minimal minimal work. I think I can get it done. The only problem with this one was the frame is shot. So I was doing some thinking on uh, either High Boy. And when I talked about it, talked about doing the high boy, the chassis from this one, and uh, that turned out to be not a good idea. I'll show you that later and why. But uh, the chassis on this one shot, which is unfortunate. And I was trying to think of uh, what would be a uh, a good chassis for it. And uh, I know a lot of people use the Super Duty stuff, and uh, it's real common. And those are great chassis and good axles, and they drive great. But my only complaint with that is they have a metric bolt pattern for the wheels. And uh, on the, the early Super Duties, you can run a 16-inch wheel, but it's metric, so you can't run the old-style steel wheels. And on the 05 and up Super Duties, it's, you have to run a 17-inch wheel. The axles are wider, and you have to, the wheels don't have a lot of dish in them, or they stick outside the body, and it just bugs the crap out of me. So I can't, I can't personally do that on my trucks because I just can't stand the way the wheels stick out and everything. But, you know, a lot of people like that, and that's great. No complaints. Uh, you guys do what you want. Uh, it's just my personal preference. I like the old steel wheels tucked up under the body looks looking original and uh, stock the way they that's just what I like so so that's the way I build them. So all that in mind, I decided to go with an OBS uh, Ford OBS frame like 97 87 and 97 you know that kind of era 92 97 uh, I ended up getting a 97 f350 from a buddy and uh, I think I'm either going to use that one or find one that's a little bit longer so I don't have to stretch it. Uh, I'd much rather shorten one than stretch it. But anyway, uh, F350, so it has a solid Dana 60 front axle, leaf springs. I'm going to keep all that stock so it drives like a stock truck. And uh, uh, that truck has a 460 in it and an uh, E4OD transmission. And I was kind of thinking about using that, building up that 460, you know, like stroker, good aluminum heads, nice fuel injection system, be a real good strong 460. Or I was thinking about a 73 uh, gas motor, the Godzilla, the new Ford Godzilla motor. They have those crate engines they're selling. I thought about doing that for this truck. Uh, I thought that'd be a real, real good power plant. It's kind of expensive and it's kind of tricky to control at this point. Uh, I got to do more research on that. Do a 6R80, 205, kind of like our old high boy, but uh, modern engine. Uh, kind of building this truck for my wife to drive. So uh, that new stuff and kind of keep everything stock so it drives, drive, drives great and reliable and everything. So uh, that's the plans for this one. Uh, might do some exterior body work. Uh, might do a quick paint job on it. Not a full-blown restoration, uh, just kind of quick and get it on the road, and uh, we might do a full-blown restoration on it later on, but uh, I think it's good enough right now. We can just kind of get a get a new chassis under it, get an engine and pirate train in it, and uh, just enjoy it as is. Uh, not sure on the bed yet what I'm doing with the beds, but uh, anyway, that's this crew cab. I don't want to spend too much time on everything because this video would be way too long, so we'll, we'll go ahead and move on to this one. Um, this is our 72 uh, crew cab, not crew cab, high boy. Got too much stuff going on. Uh, our high boy here, and uh, like I said, I was thinking about using this frame for that, that crew cab over there since it's the same year. 
but I got the Marty report and uh, that turned out to be a bad idea. This is a uh, Explore, Grabber Blue Explorer High Boy, which is I thought was really cool. It, there's one of only 70 built with this color, the Grabber Blue color, and it's a really pretty color. This this Grabber Blue, it's kind of like a lighter blue. They're really, really nice when the, when the paint's all fresh and new. You can see that Grabber Blue in here. I knew this blue was different, and uh, I didn't recognize the paint coat on the door. And I finally found a uh, 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 literature that had the paint coat in it because it's not in the chip book because it's a uh, Explore and those were like mid-year trucks. They weren't they weren't like all you had is like a limited time truck. I don't know. I'm still learning about a lot about these Explorers because I don't know a ton about them. But they had three unique color choices and Grabber Blue was one of them and this truck has it. So I thought that was really cool. One of only 70 with this paint color and it's one of only 400... 449 Explore High Boys that were made in 72. And you could only get the Explore A package. That's the only package you could get with a High Boy from my understanding. I thought that was real cool. So what I'm going to do with this truck, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of doing this to fix trucks up and, and uh, buy and sell trucks. I want to do a full-blown restoration on this High Boy. These things are, are pretty hot right now. And I think this Grabber Blue Explorer would turn out awesome. I think it would look great in that uh, Grabber Blue with the with the trim down the side. Uh, mono color, not two-tone. Anyway, I want to do a full-blown restoration on this truck. It'll be a big undertaking, but uh, I think I can do it. And I think it'll turn out awesome. It'll be 100% stock. It won't be a resto mod kind of deal like my uh, Ultimate High Boy. It'll be 100% stock, 360, divorce transfer case, the whole deal. Um... Only problem is that uh, the cab is pretty shot on that thing. I do have this perfect cab right here and uh, kind of considering using this cab for that build. The only problem is it's a 69 cab, so it doesn't have the bolt holes back here for the uh, fuel tank. The, the mounting is a little bit different, but you know, other than that, they're pretty much the same. I don't know if that would bug. It kind of bug me if I knew it, but not really. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? If, if that 69 cab, they're just a little bit different. If I put a 69 cab on that 72, you would know it's the wrong cab, but if I change it out, it's going to be the wrong cab no matter what. So I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards using this truck unless I find a good 70 and up cab to use for that high boy. But uh, this one's just so rust free and perfect. It's hard hard not to use it. It saves all that time on that rust repair. And then plus I like ha like it being original underneath and not uh, not put in with a bunch of China metal patch panels or anything like that. So having 100 uh, percent ford made cab and not uh, cut up and patched together i think that would be pretty nice and be a bonus for it instead of one that's been cut up but anyway that's my plans for this cab and that truck so far uh, i still have this short bed haven't sold it yet uh have, i haven't had a lot of time we're trying to put up our hay so uh we had some rain so i have a day off here but uh i've had a few guys message me with that i haven't had a lot of time to mess with it also thinking about selling my 72 sport custom to pay to pay for that project really and uh i got it over here and uh getting it cleaned up i don't know if i want to sell it. i mean it's it's really nice i've had it for about three years i really enjoy driving it uh it's a pretty good driving truck real good original no rust and uh, we just got done with a repaint on it it's over here i'm doing a little bit of clean work on it clean up work getting ready to do some engine work on it it has a leaking exhaust manifold gasket and uh these things are terrible about breaking bolts off in the head so we're i was planning on taking the heads off i'm getting some head reconditioned right now and then cleaning all this up putting a four barrel on it so uh that's the plan right now for for all these trucks but uh that that grabber blue high boy i'm real excited about that truck and uh excited to get going on it our next crew cab here this is our uh crew hauler build um this one's been sitting out back because i haven't been messing with this i did a lot of work with the chassis and the ambulance a few months back if you remember those videos that's where this thing's uh doing with this thing i uh, still got to get in here and cut all this crap out in this uh hack job of a uh, floor repair but uh i want to get on this thing i want to get it running i want to get the cab on it and get it running and uh not necessarily get everything perfect just get it running so i can drive it around and move it because uh if i if i if i try to get it perfect it's never going to get done because this is my personal project and uh the stuff that i have to make money on is kind of the like this truck and the the 350 over there 
those kind of get uh, first dibs because I have to do that to uh, make money and uh, make a living. So the, these projects where it's I'm keeping it, they kind of get pushed to the side sometimes when I get busy. But uh, I do want to start working on this one uh, probably after hours and uh, when I'm not so busy. I want to get it running in a driving and I'll do the body work as I go so I can just kind of, you know, hop in it and drive it to town if I want to or something like that. Doesn't nearly have to, doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. The uh, the cab sitting in here out of the rain. Here's the uh, the cab. I need to cut cut all the extra stuff off of that and get it ready to splice together. We'll go in here to the uh, to the shop in here. Yeah, in here in the shop. This is a customer's uh, Jeep CJ5. Uh, parts have been on back order for like six months. We're still waiting on suspension parts for this thing. Uh, doing some work on that thing for a guy. And uh, this is Dad 69 F100. That's real nice shape. It's just sitting here. Uh, gaining value, I guess Here's our uh, 72. This one's been here for a while. Uh, here, here's the here's the chassis for the crew hauler I got it sitting in here because that engine is exposed. I don't want to get it rained on Got it all covered up so the birds don't crap on it. Here's the chassis I need to get the uh, the front of the frame cleaned off and the, that front frame section fixed And then I'll probably set the cab back on it and do some cutting and then fit the uh, the uh, bump side cab on it So that'll be fun. Gotta get a bed on this thing, too but this 72 crew cab this is kind of what started the whole deal and kind of got my, my brain working on it. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, my plan is to do a full restoration as good as I can do it on this thing. Um, haven't decided if, if uh, it's going to be 100% stock or just a little bit of modified, like a uh, 6R80 transmission with a 390 or a new modern engine. I'm kind of leaning towards 390 with fuel injection with a 6R80, two-wheel drive, be a real nice cruiser. but. This thing was so nice. I couldn't. I know I, I put. I listed it for sale a while ago, and I had really good offers from a few guys. But uh, when I decided I'm going to start working on these trucks full time, I thought, well, I need to. I need to keep this thing so I can. I can uh, work on it and make some money on it. So I think it's nice enough. I can do a really good job on it for a full blown restoration. The interior is really nice, and uh, after the other crew cabs I bought, this was the second one I bought. So. I uh, didn't have a lot of experience with buying crew cabs at that point, but uh, have some uh, new mirrors back there for it. And uh, I thought the interior was really nice. And, you know, going back, looking at all the crew cabs I bought since then, this one's actually like the second nicest one I bought compared to uh, the one that uh, Dad's fixing up for the uh, crew cab high boy. Uh, I got this badge right here. This is the uh, the original dealer badge over here. Uh, the original one is broken, and I found this mint one on eBay, so I had I had to pick it up. I just thought that was cool. An original dealer item here. Here's the original one here. It's, it's broke right there and it's kind of faded. This one's real nice shape. So I thought that was cool. But anyway, this one, this one's kind of on the holding pattern right now. I want to, uh, I want to do that uh, high boy first, that full restoration on that high boy. Because uh, it'd be just a little bit easier than this thing because this one needs rust repair. I want to practice. I want to practice a little bit before I start doing this one because this one I think is going to be awesome when it's done, and I don't want to screw it up. So uh, since it's a crew cab, I want to take my time on it and do it right. So right now, I'm just waiting for I have when I have time to work on it. So it's just sitting in here under cover, just waiting its turn to uh, get pulled in the shop and uh, get restored. Still trying to find a bed for it. This thing is uh, this bed's pretty rough. I've uh, I've been on a bed hunt for a while now, and now I need three. I need two long beds and a short bed. I have uh, I have a lot of I have enough beds to do everything, but they're all kind of rough, and I much rather find nice ones. But uh, if I have to use these, I have to use these. But uh, still looking on beds. This thing, I don't know if I'm ever going to do anything with it, but uh, it's kind of like my project. So you know, my projects get pushed to the side for stuff that makes money. You know, these things cost money when I'm going to keep them. But uh, this thing it would be fun. I even thought about doing a super cab on it, a, a dent side super cab. But uh, for now, it's just sitting and waiting. It'll be here when I'm uh, ready to work on it. So we're just waiting on this deal. So that's what we got so far. The crew cab high boy is still in paint. Uh, we haven't got the frame done yet because uh, uh, there's no hurry on it. Uh, we still got to do some grinding and stuff on the frame, then we'll send it to powder coat. But uh, not much going on on that thing yet. Uh, waiting on the body shop. They're kind of backed up and they haven't done much work to it. But that's how it goes. 
so uh yeah that's uh that's where we're at on everything uh i guess the the diesel mustang i got the transmission back in it and everything and i have a uh, video almost finished on it i have to get it out and start it and uh that video will be ready to post so i'll have a video on the diesel mustang here pretty quick and uh yeah i think that's everything that's everything right now that i can think of but that's all these trucks that i've got going on right now the project and that's what's uh that's what's been going on here and uh hopefully i can make it work because i really enjoy working on these trucks and uh, i'm having a lot of fun with it and uh sharing it with you guys and i hope you guys enjoy it too let me know in the comments below what you think i should do what what uh what i think i should do with all these trucks if you have a different idea and uh i love hearing what you guys think uh, getting the pulse of the the ford truck community and what they think you know risto mod original all that kind of stuff you know everybody has their own opinion but uh, when you're building it for other people, you kind of got to pay attention to other people's opinion and not building it for yourself. But uh, one more thing I just remembered. This is for Dad's uh, crew cab high boy. Picked up a, uh, a snow fighter axle. If you know what that is. It's a 79 Dana 60 from an F350. Real hard to find. Uh, this one popped up for sale way too cheap. I had to go pick it up. Uh, we got it all tore apart right now, doing a rebuild on it. Has disc brakes. The big big king pins big dana 60 center section and what makes these special is their 34 inch frame width or spring uh spring width so they they bolt right into an old high boy not not quite the 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 uh shock mounts and stuff are a little bit different but the the frame width is right these are the pumpkin is further in the center compared to like an 87 and up dana 60 so uh like what i put in the ultimate high boy so this is really cool these are hard to find they only made them for two years a lot of Jeep guys like to use them because they fit in their old Jeeps. It was it was kind of rusty on the inside, set with some water in it, so we have some evapo rust sitting there to kind of dissolve some of that rust and uh, try to get that stuff cleaned up. It has uh, 14 gears in it, so we're gonna have to change it to 373 to match our rear axle. But uh, getting this thing rebuilt, I think this is going in Dad's uh, crew cab high boy build, so that'll be awesome and have a big axle in the front is what a, a crew cab needs in that 428 back there in the front. So that'll be awesome. Anyway, guys, this video is going to be too long if I keep blabbering. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any ideas for these trucks. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.